There again. We there we go. Okay. Yeah. Perhaps I should count to five, make sure we're right. here. Thank you, everyone, for joining this e us this evening uh, for the June 17th regular meeting of the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. If everyone would rise for pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. For anyone viewing and wondering why the delay, we had some technical difficulties with the video and we wanted to be able to broadcast the entire meeting to you. Um, before we get into this evening's agenda, I'd like to quickly go around the room, starting with Joe, and have everyone introduce themselves. Joe Wisbowski, Jim O'Loughlin. Mike Pierce, but before we get too far along with this meeting, I would like to bring out the attention to yes, yes. Slim Eastman. Yes. So can you bring that up, Chairman? Yes, I will. Thank you. I'm Mike Pierce. Blake Plough. Bob Ladd. Stephen LeBranche. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Joan Rice, Secretary. Brian Lapham. Jones. Richard Bernier. Uh, Sonny Kravitz. Jim Waddell. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. And yes, Mike, you are correct in saying that. So if everyone would rise and just take a minute. Lynn Eason has served this town incredibly well in the past in every facet that could be imagined over a lifetime. And sadly, this past week he passed. And if we, everybody could just take a moment to remember. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, what happened? Our last meeting, we discussed the possibility of having representatives from the New Hampshire Municipal Association come down and join us uh, for a discussion on what they bring to the town of Hampton as one of the services that we we pay for through the year. And very happily, uh, Judy Silver accepted my invitation, as well as Stephen Fornia. And they are both with us this evening. Uh, Judy is the executive director, and Stephen Fornia is the NHMA chairman of the board of directors. And they've come to us this evening for a presentation of the value that they bring to us and the services, as well as to give us an overview and answer some, some questions from this committee at the end if you have questions for them. And this is in regards to the multifacets that an HMA serves us. All right, um, I'm going to turn that over. I do want to just put a footnote in, the, in this. It is the budget committee's system of a meeting that this is not an open forum, unfortunately. Um, as we have done in the last two meetings prior to this one, we have had informational sessions where we are educating this committee with the values that we have um, for services that we get. Uh, so that is why this is not an open meeting tonight for discussion from the general public, as it is not usually at our regular meetings. I just want to remind everyone of that. But I think a lot is to be gained tonight by having um, Judy and Stephen with us. I thank you for taking us up on an invitation and joining us this evening. And I won't belabor it anymore. I will turn it over to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, and um, we are delighted to have the opportunity to come down and talk to you. Um, I'm thankful that Steve is here. We have a very engaged board um, that serves uh, with us right now, and um, it, uh, I didn't have to uh, ask twice for him to come, so uh, I, I really appreciate that, and I think that's important um, as an organization to know that we do have an active board and uh, a very supportive board. So that said, um, Steve is going to sure. make some comment. Yeah, um, I, as the chair said, my name is Steve Fournier. I'm the town administrator of Newmarket. That's my 
day job, and I'm also the chair of the board of directors for the NHMA. I've been involved in the Municipal Association um, probably for about 10 years on the board and in various committees uh, in the organization. Uh, I've been <coughs> actively involved, I mean, uh, just using the services for almost 20 years. I started out as an elected official in Summersworth during college and then went on to become a, a municipal manager. Uh, the Municipal Association, from my view, is a wealth of knowledge and a voice for our, our groups, our towns and cities across the state. Uh, not saying that just as a member of the board, I'm saying it also as a former elected official and also as an appointed administrative official. The amount of knowledge that the elected officials and appointed officials across the state receive from the organization is immense. A lot of it, people don't even realize they're receiving it from them, but they are. Um, what the Municipal Association is, is it was founded in 1941 as basically uh, an association of the cities and towns across the state to have a common voice in, the, in Concord. Uh, somebody who could represent all of us to the legislature and uh, state agencies when uh, municipalities had issues. Went along that way for many years, uh, till about the mid 80s. And that is when there was a issue when it came to insurance uh, coverage for municipalities. Uh, insurance at that time, companies at that time were dropping municipalities because of the fact that municipalities get sued a lot. Um, so the uh, liability insurance started dropping municipalities and they needed coverage. NHMA understood there was a void so they uh, stood up to the plate and started uh, up the uh, property liability trust pool. Basically everybody pulled money together and paid out when there was claims against it. Shortly after, they cited also the health trust in the same situation. Uh, that went along. There was three different boards for many years under the uh, umbrella of the NHMA. So there was the NHMA board, the property liability trust board, and the health trust board. In 2004, uh, it was the decision of the three boards to merge into one entity as the local government center, which is the name that a lot of people may know as of right now. Uh, after that, in about 2012-13, the NHMA never went away. NHMA was always there. It was always the group that was advocating for cities and towns. And probably about that time, it was noted that by some individuals that the NHMA was sort of losing its identity in the LGC. And it was getting mixed up, and which a lot of people still do, um, and that it was time for a bit of a change. So. Last year, the change came through, and it was not only it was already coming down the pike from uh, the entities itself, but it was pushed along a little faster through the regulatory uh, situation uh, to separate the boards. And the NHMA was spun off back into the entity that it was, and it's been since 1941, which is advocating for municipal governments across the state and educating municipal governments. Uh, the other two boards are separate. We are not involved with each other. We are all housed in the same building, just out of convenience at this point, because that's where we were. But the boards uh, don't meet. We, you know... Together. Together. <laughs> together. <laughs> Thank you. But we're not, you know, we're not a single board any longer. We're separate entities completely. Our board is made up of 21 individuals. I serve as chair. The city manager of Laconia serves as vice chair. He was originally the mayor of Dover. So we try to get uh, an appointed and elected official uh, to serve as chair and vice chair. It just happened to be that he switched positions in the middle. Uh, we also split the board pretty much between appointed and elected. Uh, we have a lot of selectmen, councilors, mayors. Town, we have some town clerks. We have um, planners, economic development committee members, across the board, cross section of local officials that serve. Uh, we meet uh, monthly to do the business of the board, and also to review what's going on in Concord. You know, what bills are coming up that are gonna impact cities and towns across the state. And we also uh, get input from cities and towns across the state and say, hey, look, I don't know if you understand that this is going on. What can the, what can the municipal association do to help us? Uh, and, uh, above that, the staff also provides the infamous training that you hear, right to know law sessions, budget uh, sessions. I know that was part of the discussion at your last meeting when I watched some of it. Uh, the, the planning law lecture series. Those are the things that I think a lot of municipalities take for granted, but that's, that's done through the Municipal Association through the dues that are, are collected. 
Uh, if that wasn't there, there would be a void of where some of that education would be coming from. You'd probably have to pay your own, well, you have in-house counsel. Your in-house counsel would have to be going out every night and teaching every board about all these situations. And, you know, he may not be an expert in everything. We try to get experts in for, you know, for most for all these topics. In-house staff can't be an expert on everything, so we bring in attorneys from other agencies or other organizations to help speak on things. So that's really what we are. We're a member-driven organization. Uh, Judy's going to talk more about uh, items that pertain more to Hampton and what some of the benefits that the town of Hampton has received from the municipal association. And then we'll be open for any questions. So turn it back over to Judy. Thank you. Um, the other, only other thing I would add to what Steve said is that we elect our board of directors um, at our annual meeting every fall. Um, there are candidates put forth that anybody who um, is in attendance at our annual meeting and notice goes out to every municipality that's a member can um, exercise a vote to uh, determine who's going to be on the board of directors. So there really is that. Um, across the state member involvement in that process. Yeah, that's true. I mean, just real quick, we also try to get members from all corners of the state. We, you know, we look and we say, well, you know, we have too many from the central part. Let's try to get some people from Coas County. Let's try to get some people from the seacoast or from over near Keene. We try to get a mix of the, the whole state's representative too. So what's in here, and I'm not going to go through it all because you certainly can take a look at it, but is um, a, an overview of or examples of some of the things that we do. Um, a couple of legislative bulletins from this year, one that dealt with, um, explains a little bit about what happened with the town clerk issue, because I'm sure that you've heard about that. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about that. Another one um, talking about the pollution control exemption, because we were working again with Hampton representatives trying to change that. We also have our um, final legislative bulletin from last year. We are presently working on this year's, because the legislative session has ended. <coughs> and a court update where our attorneys have reviewed all of the court decisions that affect municipalities from the 2013 session. Um, and also a pamphlet, the letter that you probably saw, um, but just thought I would refresh everybody with that, um, responding to some of the things that were said at your deliberative session. Um, law lecture pamphlet, uh, information on that, and also an NHMA on demand training. Because your dues are over $15,000, you are able to um, have one of our attorneys come and do an, an, an on-demand training for anybody in town, whatever board it might be, whatever subject it might be, uh, preferably from a list of things that we uh, do the on-demand training about for no, or no fee. That is something that we do. Um, and charge uh, money to other municipalities that are interested in having that uh, done in their town. As I looked through um, the statistics in preparation for coming here, I was really pleased to see the level um, at which uh, Hampton uses the NHMA services. The legal advisory services, we have the two attorneys that are available to answer questions from different boards and officials and employees with uh, talking about questions within the scope of their responsibilities. Um, there were 23 inquiries in 2013, and in the years before that, it averaged about 14 or 15 um, a year before that. I think that's great. Um, also having your in-house counsel because sometimes our folks have just a different perspective because we're hearing what's going on in towns around the state and we also have been able to work closely with your in-house counsel and provide that kind of information so that you're not only seeing what is going on perhaps in Hampton or the Seacoast area. Um, I know you talked at your last meeting about the budget and finance workshop, but you send people to that. Um, you send people to the law lecture series. Um, you sent one person to the moderator's workshop, but that makes sense because you only have one moderator, so that's, that's the good news. Um, you sent people to the local official workshops. Those are a series of workshops we do every spring, particularly geared to newly elected local officials, although we certainly have um, more experienced people come um, just to learn the latest changes and what's gone on um, in the legislature or the courts that are going to affect local government. Um, and you sent five people to our conference last year. Um, so that 
uh, that I think is, is great. You're using the services. We run a series of webinars and you have had attendees at, at virtually every webinar we have run this year. I don't have last year's statistics. Last year was the first year we did it and we treaded kind of hesitantly into the world of webinars because we're used to more face-to-face -face communication, but the response has been great and um, it is helpful for us because we can get out to a lot of people without leaving the office and we can get a lot of people learning the information um, without having them leave their offices. So we're getting um, pretty good at that. Um, so I think that you are your, your folks are doing well here, and we are really pleased to, to see that. Um, I hate going to a municipality when um, people maybe aren't paying enough attention to what is offered. And I know my own town for many years did not, and now with some new folks on board, we are getting a lot greater participation, because that's what we're there for. You get um, copies of, or electronic copies of the legislative bulletin. We do that every week during the legislative session to keep you apprised of what's going on. Um, you get, I believe it is 20 complimentary copies of the Town and City Magazine. We do that every two weeks. That is a more comprehensive publication with in-depth articles on various subjects um, and um, other kinds of information. Uh, we also have a, an electronic newsletter, which I did, that goes out to thousands of people, so I did not look to see the, the distribution list on that. Um, it's called Newslink. That is, that goes out every two weeks, and it really is our source of info, our, our method of updating people on the workshops that we're doing, um, things that are coming up. We uh, spread the word on programs that others are doing that are of interest to municipal officials. So that is really our um, most um, most frequent and, and best uh, used, I think, opportunity to get information out to people on what's happening. So I think that um, that we are really pleased with how, um, how you're using the services. I know that um, one of the things that was talked about at your deliberative session <coughs> was um, the City of Manchester not being a member and having done just fine. And I'm really pleased to report that the City of Manchester in the budget that it just passed a couple weeks ago um, approved rejoining the Municipal Association. Um, we think that kind of thing is critical because particularly in our legislative efforts, the broader the voice we can speak with, the better opportunity we have to pass legislation that is going to be beneficial to municipalities. And um, I know this might come as a shock, but to stop legislation that is not going to be beneficial to <laughs> municipalities and to fight um, unfunded mandates and things like that. So um, I, uh, I'm happy that, that they're coming back, but that's not to say that we don't value absolutely every municipality that's a member. And we have all now but two municipalities that are members, so that's... That's a pretty good number from yeah. what I hear from my colleagues around New if, England. For an anecdote from Manchester, I think this really hit home was um, we were told at the board directors meeting last week that a, a, an employee of the city needed legal, an illegal opinion, legal advice, and called up to you know the legal department and somebody they know and said, "Well, you know, I got a question about this. Can you help me?" He goes, "I can't. You're not a member." So that's one of the things that people don't realize. They, they just assume that it's always going to be there. And um, I think that, that really hit it home for them is that one of the things that they needed was that they don't have that um, safety net there of a second opinion or something if they have some questions. And I hear that so often that, you know, you know when I was in uh, Northampton, you know, there were some concerns over it. But one thing they always said is that we didn't want to leave the municipal association because of the training and the, the, the legal advice that they could get and the, the, the savings that they had from that, so. And I think the other thing that um, Manchester folks were concerned about um, was that, at least in terms of the legislative policy process, um, if you're not a member, you don't have a seat at the table. You don't have a right to come to the policy conference and vote on what the policies are that we are going to pursue. And um, that you know, that can, can work against you. I know that the town of Auburn was having issues with Manchester on um, 
Manchester Waterworks property that was located in Auburn, and they brought a policy forward, and um, the membership adopted that policy because Manchester wasn't a member. If Manchester had been a member, that probably would have been a policy that would not have been adopted because it would have had us pitting members against each other, and we don't step into those situations. The policy process is ongoing now. We have three committees that um, meet to dis discuss different issues, a planning and environmental quality, a general government uh, and a governance committee, and um, finance and administration. They review policy proposals that uh, folks from municipalities have put forth and issues that the m members of the committees themselves have and the policies that we've had in the past. And they create a set of recommendations. Each committee creates a set of recommendations. That is done, and the hard copy went out to every municipality today um, of those recommendations. We will be emailing those out to um, all kinds of people, particularly boards of selectmen who, um, whose email addresses we have, because the next stage is anybody, any municipality who feels that something hasn't been covered can submit a floor policy. That has to be approved by the full board of selectmen. And then we get those out to everybody, and a policy conference is held um, September 26th. Every municipality who is a member gets to send a representative to that policy conference, and we always urge the governing body to review the policies and take a position on the policies and send their delegate with that information so that you make sure that your delegate is representing the interest of your communities. Mike, I think that you came to our last policy conference, yes, did I you did. not? Yep. 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 So um, you know exactly how that works. And those, whatever is adopted at the policy conference is what governs our advocacy efforts before the state house, um, or before the state legislature. So, so, so it's not a, you know, a group of people just making the decision. It's all the municipalities across the state that are making the decision what the municipal associations are advocating for. It's not, you know, I say five people sitting and say, well, this, these are the bills we're going to support or not support. It's a representation across the state. And if you don't come, then sadly you miss my You may not be represented at the at the table at that situation. And at the policy conference, everybody's welcome. I mean, every community is allowed to have one member to come. So that's very important to send somebody. And Jim, I think you have some firsthand experience with that, working with Barbara yes. Reed um, on retirement reform. Mm -hmm. We work very closely with Dick Nichols on yep. that mm -hmm. as well. Um, working on some of the spiking issues, which would have cost. Um, just Hampton alone, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars um, for uh, in spiking costs per uh, retiree or per um, per uh, public safety employee. So it's and that kind of thing is replicated across the state. But unless you have a group that can follow that and can bring in people from all over the state and cover all the different representatives, it's hard to get complicated subjects like that addressed in the legislature and um, and we really count on the local representatives who understand how it affects a municipality you know, like Jim to, to work with us on getting those things passed. So I guess if this questions of us it's this a good time as any to start asking us. All right I'll start on this side of the table no, with Joe. Nothing right now. Michael. I have a couple of questions. Um, number one is how do I get on the list about when this policy meeting is going to be held if I'm not a selectman? Because I was a selectman. That's why I showed up the last time and all the selectmen at the board at the time said, we'll let Michael do it. You've probably seen the commercial for the cereal. <laughs> <Yeah>. Let Mikey <laughs> try it. Okay, I went up. And unbeknownst to me, <coughs> one of the fellow selectmen, I won't get into that, had put in an issue for you guys to think about. I wasn't even aware of that, which surprised me immensely. And I even argued <laughs> against it at your meeting, as you recall. I remember and, that. <laughs> uh, uh, I made quite a to-do. But how do, I, how do we know, as budget committee members, that this meeting is going to be held, and nobody from Hampton, for example, has decided to join the meeting. 
because I would love to go if nobody else cares to on the Board of Selectmen, for example. I would talk with the Board of Selectmen because they um, get that information in the first instance. Mm -hmm. um, we have a hierarchy of who um, gets to represent the town, but mm -hmm. only if there is nobody who has been designated. So if you want to volunteer and the Selectmen want you to come, we send out postcards and you, they just send, out the, send back the information that you're going to be the town's representative. Well, thank you. There's, well because the politicals a win right now in Hampton, I probably wouldn't be the selected person. <laughs> but putting that aside, uh, I have a couple more questions. Can I uh, answer that just a little bit more? Yeah. We can get you on Newslink. Anybody who wants to um, receive our Newslink email newsletter, um, I think my email address is on the card. Just email me and say Newslink, and I will get you on there. Great. And you can also look at our website. Sure, and I think it's a very important thing to say too is that our meetings, much like every municipality, fall under 91A. So we have to have them open to the public unless it's a non-public issue. So you could come and watch. You may not be able to participate, but right. you can come and watch the meetings so they're open to the public like any other meeting. If I can't make a noise, I stink. I understand, but why would I, why would I come? <laughs> we'd still like to have you there. <laughs> no, I, I had one more question. Now I know that in Hampton, the Politics in Hampton are interesting, as you probably know. We've had a person in Hampton that's sort of bad mouth, so to speak. Let me rephrase that. Tried to put the HMAA and the LGC and all that in really bad light. And I think that what we need here for the taxpayers and the people of Hampton who are picking up the tab um, is how you are separated now from that insurance issue and also some other issues that have, were brought up. Did you see some of the comments that were made at our delivery session? Most this certainly last? I did. Yeah. Now that was very unfavorable. I'm not saying the person who made them was wrong. I'm just saying it was not very favorable to you folks. So I'd like you to respond to that, if you would, please. Well, I, I would beg to differ with um, pretty much everything he said <laughs> and I won't say that he was well I do think he was mistaken in much of it because we are separate as Steve just explained to you um, NHMA and the NHMA board provides these services the advocacy services the legal advisory services the training programs we do not control the um, insurance end of things perhaps many years ago NHMA overall created those programs, but we are now separate. <clears throat> they have their own boards. Um, as Steve said, we're housed in the same building. We pay rent um, because we don't um, we don't really own much of the building. We pay them for services that they give us. It's like the finance services. We could purchase those services from someplace else. So we have totally um, separated from any kind of interaction there. Um, we we were not NHMA was not named in any of the uh, regulatory proceedings. We are not regulated by the Secretary of State's Office or the Bureau of Securities. We are a private nonprofit entity, um, a, a nonprofit uh, corporation. So we we don't have anything to do with that. We were not a named party. Um, we were not represented. We did not spend any money on any defense of any of that. Um, LGC did. LGC was in a different position, but NHMA was not. And um, in, in during that time, too, there was a very thick firewall between the, the insurance side and the advocacy side because we wanted to make sure the, two, the, the funds for those two never met. Right. That the communities who are paying for advocacy and paying for training, that was the NHMA side. If you had insurance product, because employees' money was in there too, that say that went on that side of the firewall, and they didn't mix. So that was always set up, and where the 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 money is never never mixed. At one point in time, some of the uh, administration and the organ and governance had some overlap, but that's gone. We're completely separate, independent now. Well, that's really good to hear because if you sort of follow the general conception mm -hmm. in the public arena, you sort of mix it all together. And I sort of knew that all along, but it's good to <coughs> explain that to the public here in Hampton because the Hampton taxpayers are paying 
for me to be here and for you to be here and for everything else that goes in Hampton. So I really appreciate you explaining that. And that's really all I have to say. I just wanted to make that perfectly clear for the public. Not for me, I already knew that, but the public sometimes falls behind on this. Not so much that we don't try to inform them, but sometimes they don't get well informed. And, and I'll try to even put it this way. The Municipal Association created two entities that became very successful. And so successful, it actually almost became bigger than the Municipal Association <laughs> itself. Mm. And that's when everything got spun off. And now they're on, they're on their own and we're on our own. It's sort of like we, uh, the children grew up and they're out on their own and we have nothing to do with them anymore. <laughs> so, um, and they, whatever happens, happens with them. We, are, we have no, regu no oversight, no involvement. Thank you very much. That's all I have. I'm all set. Do, are village districts and towns that are members eligible for your services? Village districts can be members. Um, they will receive all of our publications. They can come to our trainings. We will uh, address legal questions that they have, provided that they are not involved in a dispute with their host community. Mm -hmm. But we, the district would have to be a member separate from the town? Yes. OK, thank yes. you. We are not now, are we? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are a lot of village districts that are members, um, I believe. I think we have <laughs> 28 or 30 or something yeah. like that that are like I know there's a lot in Conway that area there's a lot of village districts that are members so we do have a lot of them there are a lot of village districts in this state yeah. actually <laughs> thank you I think this has been a very good opportunity to separate um, the consolidation of 2004 um, Mike left the room but um, he brought up a point about deliberative session and individuals that brought that to light and an individual that brought that to light and a reminder here that that individual was also very instrumental in, in leading the charge to have hundreds of thousands of dollars returned to this town and that should not be forgotten but in fairness this is a different issue and to educate ourselves and the public as to where we are today. I think you've done an excellent job in doing that, as well as the presentation on the conference. And um, the process that goes through and how you represent us. And it appears you're not functioning on your own. You are, by vote, going forward. Um, and you've really made some clarity out of that mud, so to speak, yeah. for me anyway. I don't know if I'm speaking for everybody else, but for myself, you have done that. I thank you for that. Um, but this is, we've had tough times. I won't minimize it. And while we all try to get along, there has been tough relationship in recent years, in the past decade at least, between the cities and towns and LGC and NHMA and perhaps um, because you were all mixed together, you took a backlash that certainly we would, to some regard, bite our nose to spite our face, not realizing the benefits that you bring to us. So I want to thank you both very much for clarifying some things. I think any actions in the future will take into consideration strongly what you've said here tonight. Thank you. Brian? I just want to say um, I have been in support of the NHMA for a long time. Um, the information you get and you, well, that you send out is, I mean, you can interpret it any way you want to, but the information is what you want. And um, I've been to your conferences, I've been in the budget committee, this, that. And I always got, came out of there feeling really good about the information that I got and that it was up to date. And I know a couple times I've sent emails out, not, you know, I want to sue the town type thing, but just having a general question, got a general answer, and that's all I wanted. And so um, thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. Uh, I appreciate uh, you know, I've had uh, some interaction with your organization. It's been fruitful, um, particularly the budget and finance workshop last fall. 
I've been on a couple of your webinars. Uh, I think that's great that you're providing that now. Um, after the webinar takes place, you're posting them on YouTube so that actually all the world can get educated on whatever the topic happened to have been. That is absolutely super stuff. Uh, thank you for that. I want to encourage you to continue doing that. The, um, <clears throat> the workshops you do, I would like to see a similar treatment on YouTube so that we don't necessarily have to go there. And, and more important than you know, us having to go, which frankly, when I went to the budget workshop last year. I thought you know, a big part of the experience for me was talking to other budget committee members from other towns. Mm. The interaction, yes. the, the new perspective that I got, there was valuable information in the presentation, but the opportunity to interact with other community members that were on budget committees or on selectmen, yeah. there's a little of selectmen there as well, uh, and Great. getting a different perspective from different aspects of the state gave me a broader perspective of, uh, that I could bring to bear in my function here. Uh, but at the same time, not everyone's able to go there, and I think that the citizens, the voters in town, would be uh, well served just seeing the presentation on YouTube. So if you could, uh, you know, set up a camera there and throw it up on YouTube afterward, I think that would be a, a, a service that would be uh, um, very helpful in governing all the towns in the state, certainly here. Um, I did have a couple of questions for you. Um, I don't, I'm not inclined to do kumbaya, but I do appreciate <laughs> yeah, no, the services no problem. that you come to. Uh, and I do have some things that I wanted to ask some questions about. I heard that you say that you were a private entity, and I acknowledge that you are a private entity. Uh, but I also heard Stephen say that you're subject to 91A, which I find yeah. interesting. How is it, as a private entity, that you're subject to 91A? We are a quasi-governmental entity as as that comes under uh, the right to know law. Mm -hmm. From a corporate legal perspective, we're just a, I can't remember the statute, but under, under some statute, we are created under that statute and that's structurally how we are formed. So but because you? the revenues come from governments, that gives us the quasi-governmental status which so, has so it's actually because you have an enormous percentage of your revenue coming from the government. Yep. That's what requires you to conform to 91A. There's a Supreme Court case. Right. Ten years ago? Was it that long? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that came out and said, yeah, you have to follow the, the uh, aspects of 91A. And we do. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. of the funding, yep. uh, percentage mm -hmm. of funding yep. you receive from government, much like Rockingham Planning Commission Absolutely. would be the same kind exactly. of thing, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I wanted to get everyone to be on board yep. with that particular point. Uh, I, I view you, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, but you, 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 you uh, basically are a lobbyist organization. And as a lobbyist, of course, your education, your educational activities is the foundation of your lobbying effort. Your lobbying is mostly done at the state house, but you also lobby within the government, within the various towns and cities in the we, state. We don't lobby municipalities. We don't no, go I said educate. Educate, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't <laughs> lobby. Yeah, we don't go and lobby for a passage of a, a, a warrant article on the community. Right. That's that we don't do that. No. Mm -hmm. uh, when you spoke earlier about representation from the town, mm -hmm. um, that's a person, and I don't even know who our representative is this year. Uh, I'm not sure that anybody does, except for whoever decides who they are, and how is that decided who they are? You mean to the policy conference? Yeah. That's determined by the, the, the hierarchy, and I'm trying to remember if it was correctly. If the municip if this municipality governing body does not choose an individual, so it would be up to the select board in Hampton situation, it goes from the mayor or the chair of the board. The next would be a member of the board what of aldermen, selectmen, or yeah, council. The, governing body, yeah. the next down is the chief administrative officer, so either the town manager, city manager, or town administrator. And then I don't, I think that's the last one we, we have We only designated. have a certain yeah. number, yeah. So it's essentially the governing body, and if they don't make a decision, then... It defaults to one of those. The town manager basically makes the decision. No, nope. if the mayor, if the chair goes, the chair can sign in. If another member of the select board goes, they can sign in. Oh, yeah. so the chair can make a delegation all on his own, you know. Yeah. Wait, I think we're talking two different yeah. things here. 
the Board of Selectmen can delegate anybody they want to to be the uh, town's representative at the policy conference. Okay. Should they not delegate anybody and some and two people show up, then then we look at that hierarchy to determine who gets the vote because only one person would get the vote. So ideally, the town would delegate somebody. I can tell you, I personally had an issue. Not, not, wasn't that issue, but there was a policy conference where I believe I was actually chairing it, filling in, and my community, a, a select board member, went. Mm -hmm. So I, I could chair it, but I couldn't vote in it. So because I wasn't the, I wasn't on I know the hierarchy. In the past, you've so, had some yeah. some conflicts at these meetings with more than one person showing up and, yep. and things yep. like that. And, you have to come up with certain rules of how you're going right. to resolve just that conflict. Much because, like town meeting, you have you to move on with the process, right? You hand out yeah. cards. Much like town meeting, if you have the card, then the vote counts. Uh -huh. So we have that's how we do it. So if, if say that in in, in uh, the town of Hampton, no one no one shows up. Uh, Where's your typical? Let me finish my hypothetical. I'm sorry, because <laughs> it is not uncommon. That's why I'm bringing it up. Excuse so me, if no sorry. one showed up from the town of Hampton, and I, as a budget committee, showed up, budget committee members showed up. Would I then be able to cast a vote in the policy matter? I think you would. I'd have to look at the rules. Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head, but that's one of those things we'd have to look. Yeah. Okay. But I, I mean, I, as for showing up, I think we usually get maybe 75 to 100 of the 234 cities and towns. That's kind of, kind of a low percentage. Yeah. And we, we well, you publicize know, it. And I'm not sure it is. When you look at how many people vote in elections and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> I think yeah. that we... Oh, well, it's 50%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 50 but, but Judy, to be right. fair, yeah. I think that's a fair comparison. Yeah. We're talking about people who are actively involved, actively yeah. involved in government, you know, which is a different population than the voters at large, many of which are not you know, really tuning in that frequently. Uh, we all know that. Well, you know, you, you may say that everybody should be more actively involved. I mean, how many people haven't watched the ads on TV when something is coming up like a presidential election? But How many have mm -hmm. not watched the ads? How many? Well, how many have not watched? I think everybody has, oh, and I, they I, don't. I turn the channel whenever. They <laughs> That's what C-Fan I mean, is for. Yeah, right. <laughs> if, I, if I was, because I actually chair the policy conference as chair of the board, and if I had 232 now, Cities and towns come, have a representative, each representative, I'd love it. Right. Sadly, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you've got, somebody may not be able to make it. I would love to have everybody there. Um, but, you know, we do get a very good, I mean, we don't get 12, which is very, you know, which I would almost probably want to have the meeting. So, and, it, and it's good debate. And it's a good cross-section there, too. I don't want everybody to think it's like, well, we got 50 people from the seacoast and 10 from Keen and nobody from the North Country. These meetings bring out across the state. Yeah, sure so and that's and I think that's one of the big important things too, that it's not just a Concord area group. It's not just a Seacoast area group. It's not just a Keen area group. It's a statewide organization. And you know I have, I always feel I actually feel bad because we have some, a lot of people from the North Country who are probably the most dedicated board members who drive <laughs> down every time, even if there's snow. And some of the closer ones won't. So yeah, it just I want to well, those up in the North Country. Those are traditional town meeting. Uh, uh, not all. Uh, no, no, Berlin. We got cities. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But That's most the of them are traditional town meetings. Still, most okay. probably, yeah. 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 That's the best part of your classes. Yeah. <laughs> it's to meet everybody from everywhere. Yeah. The uh, lobbying activity that I see that you do over the years, to the extent that I've been able to follow your history, which thanks to the internet, I'm able to do with much greater ease than in the past. Uh, it seems like they're, you're a very effective lobbying organization. Um, and there are other lobbying groups in the state that you're kind of like interacting with or doing battle with, depending on how you want to phrase it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it all depends on the issue. Yeah, um, there sometimes, are sometimes we can... We work with them. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we don't agree. I mean, there's a group that we traditionally work with a lot, a town, clerk's tax, a town Clerks Association. 90% of the time we agree on on bills that come through. Every year there's one bill that we're going to be loggerheads. Town Clerks? Town Clerks Association. Mm -hmm. They have their own association. They have their own. Okay. Yep. That's very like interesting. There's a, there's a uh, road agents association. There's a library association. There's a, <laughs> there's a manager's association. There's a group of, tax for everybody. <laughs> tax, tax collectors. So there's other associations. And, and you're really an association for the governing body. We're the <laughs> government, right. We're the governing, the governing body. Yeah. Right. Is there an association for the legislative bodies? We 
We view it as we represent the municipality as a whole, as a whole. Mm -hmm. and the governing body is essentially the CEO of the municipality because we have to be able to get our marching orders from somebody. So then those other organizations like the town clerk and et cetera, you would consider those to be, uh, you know, uh, redundant to no. what you're doing because well, absolutely not, you're because actually representing special, them they, as well, right? They have more uh, specialized knowledge of what they're doing. They, they're the people with the feet on the ground every day off of their organizations. Mm -hmm. I mean, even as a as a manager, I don't know every time that the town what the town clerk goes through in, every day. They need to get together and explain what they what they see, and especially if there's an issue with a bill that's going to impact their operations. So no, I don't see them as redundant. They're just more specialized in mm -hmm. what we you know what we do. We try to look at what's going to impact the municipality as a whole. So you're going to your body conferences and you're collecting representatives from the governing bodies. We collect from a broad array. We have planning board members, we have governing bodies. Um, we well, have selectmen are making the choice, uh, basically. And they're the governing body. Selectmen are making the choice for what? I'm sorry. Who's, re who's representing a town, so to speak? For the policy? In the policy. At the policy meeting. conference? Yeah, that's where you decide what policies you're going to pursue or not pursue. Right. Right. So when you're deciding which policy you're going to pursue or not pursue for your lobbying efforts for the coming year, you're, you're uh, basing that decision on the votes of people that the towns send to that meeting. And the people that are sent to that meeting from those towns are basically decided by the Board of Selectmen, that is to say the governing body. So the representatives are really representatives of the governing body. Fair? You, you may find that and... Is that a fair statement is all I'm asking? I think it's a fair statement. I think that you are suggesting that there's some bias in that, and no, I I'm think most sure. of the time, most of the time, the governing body and the legislative body's interests are aligned, but there are times when they're not, and uh, there is no legislative body lobbying group that that represents the legislative body when they are not aligned. So there's kind of a, a occasional problems that arise from that, and I think part of what Mr. Lang was speaking at the deliberate session actually speaks to this very point. Because you remember his famous phrase was, uh, you know, quote, they don't represent us, they don't ask us. And I sat back and I looked at that video several times and I'm asking myself, who is he talking about? Us. And I realized he's talking to Tom Meany, he's talking to the legislative body. And he's saying just, just that. There are times that well, in fact, you don't ask the legislative body, you ask representatives of the governing body. And his statement had some basis of merit, in my opinion. And I just wanted to kind of highlight that because I, I don't think he went over the top with that statement, while many might interpret that as going over the There's top. There's one thing also, just real quick, that you've got to realize, too. You're discussing one form of government in the state. There are 20 municipalities, and I believe it's a, it's very close to the majority of the state, are not governed under a town meeting form of government. They're under, they're under a representative form of government where the legislative body oh, is, wow. is rested in the council. Yes, but it's we are... It's a representative form of government. But we are not. Right. And, and I just want to make sure, but our organization also has to balance. We balance the larger communities that are representative forms. We, and actually, there's some representative forms that are much smaller than... You know, I, I acknowledge what so you're we, saying. So we have to balance them all, and we try to get that uh, broad perspective there, too. Mm -hmm. And I understand what you're saying, too. Yeah, the, the legislative body... We, Yes, we have a, the, the most of the, the representation of the policy committee are appointed by the governing uh, body. That's the policy because the governing body represents the municipality. And that's not just with our organization, that's across the state. The governing body is mm -hmm. the governing body, that's by definition. So, um, but trust me, there, these, are, these policy sessions aren't rubber stamps either. There's a lot of debate. Well, I think and, I think I just wanted to bring yeah. some some uh, fairness to the issue because some people have been you know not as um, circumspect in looking at Mr. Lang's comments at the little session. And when I speak of legislative body, of course, I'm talking about the town of Hampton's legislative mm -hmm. body. And I think his statement has merit. I think you agree with me that it has some merit, although all by itself it may not be enough to justify defunding the, the, uh, the dues. Now, from my point of view, 
uh, the educational material that you're bringing forth to the general public as well as the opportunities that we have is worth the money, especially when I see things like, you know, dealing with retirement issues that have, have, have risen and other things that you save us a lot of money and it's money well spent and I think the public needs to know that. But at the same time, there's no reason we have to, uh, or I should say, there's no reason others need to uh, vilify those who are perhaps speaking accurately when they say, you know, you don't represent the legislative body here in the town of Hampton. That's just a fact, you know. Uh, well, oftentimes you do when they happen to align with the government. We represent yeah. the government. Okay. Of yeah. But there are times when it we does. We represent the government of the town of Hampton. Right. Mm -hmm. One thing I might like to add to sure, that. Sure, go ahead. This is a real good point. When I was a representative of this committee, and you can verify this, I went up there, and unbeknownst to me, another selectman had promoted an idea to the policy board. And guess what? It was a democratic process at that meeting to endorse that idea. And I was adamantly against it. The town of Hampton had voted against it many times. And yet, it was passed by this policy board because the majority at that meeting, which was a democratic process, endorsed it. So one could argue successfully, or argumentatively, that it's a democratic process. The towns all get to voice or view, take it or leave it. That's the way it is. When you vote for democracy, you get it. And I can tell you what the, the most contentious issue I've been involved since I've been chair at the policy conferences uh, is gambling. We that comes up because municipalities have the right to introduce legislation. I mean, not legislation, but a policy. And it comes up, it says, to see if the Municipal Association will take a position supporting legalized gambling. I know that's going to be a long debate, and I get ready as, mm -hmm. as basically as a moderator of the group. But um, it's, it, plays, it was said it was a democratic process. The, every municipality has one vote. And it, we don't take a position on that, as, as we don't take one on education funding, because that would put community against community, and it's not uh, pretty productive on that situation. But, you know, it, it's a dem democratic process, and if a majority said, yeah, we are going to take a position, then we take a position. So, that's, and that's across the, t the state from each municipality. Well, yeah, it's a democratic process right. among those representatives every, every, that were every, sent, sent by, yep. uh, you know, a governing body, yep. okay. which Absolutely. is something of a democracy when you say that only property owners can vote. Understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Richard? Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. How often does this bulletin come out? Weekly during the session. Weekly during the session. Yep. Is it, uh, is it sent to the local libraries? Mm. Or does it, is it sent to it hard copy to? Email to online. you personally. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, People we, like to read hard copy. I'm asking if this goes to local libraries, for somebody to walk into the library and go back through the past uh, bulletins. I don't think that it is. It's so, on our website. Oh, I yeah. know people like to read hard, but the, everything is on our website, and all the past years are. So this out weekly. During the legislative session, when the yeah. legislature oh, is in the session. They're all done now. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. And Might be able to ask them to, yeah. to yeah. print one. Yeah, you can go to the library and print one out. Piggybacking on that, Rich, we can yeah. certainly <laughs> have um, Joan, if you wouldn't mind, send all our emails of everybody interested in being on your your, your mailing list. And so could anybody get on the mailing list for this, or on an email for this bulletin? Yes. Yep. That's, that's, what the, that's what the news link is for, right? Right. right. News, right. Link, news link is different that's uh, because that email. goes every two weeks, and that talks about other things. That goes every week, During and the, and yeah. what we send you is a essentially a notice that it's there, or you can just go to our website. But you can get, absolutely get on that distribution list. Just to you know, clarify in my own mind on the whole process here, just not, gonna, you're saying just a, that a as I just bills come up yet. or proposed, that whoever are advocates or opponents of that bill come to you as for your input and for your either recommendation to approve or oppose them? Well, as the bills we have our set of policies, mm -hmm. and as the bills are introduced at the beginning of every session, right. we identify 
all the bills that are of municipal interest. Some don't have anything to do with any policy, and we well, don't. Let's, let's take casino gambling. Yeah. Yep. Um, right. So we would have had a policy ahead of time about casino gambling. Based and so, on the input from the communities? From the communities. Yes. And we have no opinion on that, so we do not testify. That's what I say. So you don't way. advocate we or don't oppose. We don't advocate oppose or f against or in no. favor of it. But how do you determine at the bottom line whether or not you are, uh, you know, as you're going to lobby for that, whether you're going to advocate, advocate it or oppose it? In the legislative bulletin, I believe it's in here, isn't it? The policy statement, their uh, overall policies. Mm, or is that in the? No, that's in the. We have a basically uh, what we call it's what we call our policy. It's our legislative policies. It's a broad spectrum of saying like we support no unfunded mandates to municipalities. Mm -hmm. So very broad. And what the staff does at the beginning of the legislative session goes through all the bills and figures out whether or not the bills fall under one of these po these positions. Mm -hmm. And if it's, you know, supports one of these positions, they'll go and advocate for it. If it doesn't, then they all advocate against it, if it's against the position. If it's a question about it, and it's off during, not during the session, and they're like, you know, the staff is like, well, we're not too sure. We need to get more of opinion. They'll come back to the board and say, look, we believe it's against this, pol this part of our policy, or um, legislative policy positions. What does the board think? And then they'll ask the board, which is a representative again of cross section of municipalities of 21 people, because you can't pull everybody in every time there's a bill up. So they rep they come up and say, well, we th we think it falls in, or we don't we don't think we should pu support it. So that it comes up all the time. Usually at each of our meetings, there will be some bill that we, they have to either oppose or support, and they'll ask the board. So in effect, the the municipalities themselves can lobby by having enough of them, enough municipalities appear before you either as advocates or opponents. Yep. Right? Yep. Yes. How do you determine which way to go with something like it's that? A, it's a vote. It's a demo vote. democracy. 21 members. Majority says we 21 members of your the board of directors. Of the board situation. of directors. Yep. In that situation where, the, where it's a specific bill and the staff needs guidance, they'll say, we'll bring it up and they'll say, you know what, we'll support it or not support it this time. And then we'll clarify it later by changing the policy or amending it the, at the next. So, if representatives session. of the of 50 municipalities show up at your board, advocating casino gambling. I think I, that one I don't think would mm -hmm. honestly I don't think would pass our board, even if it came up, because it's a representative against again the board of directors itself is a representation across the state, right. so it's not. Yeah, I, I, in my years as chair and as being on the board, I've never seen the groups lobby the board to support or not that's, support That's something. the board yeah, point I'm no, driving at. No. Mm -hmm. If a group shows up to, as, to no. lobby you as lobbyists. No. Right? Nope, I've never seen that happen. Right. So, I mean, you know. No, they are, I think the board is very circumspect about where they're going to adopt a policy where there hasn't already been some position I taken. See. I think usually they are looking at some more fine-tuning of, of issues um, rather than a wholesale policy adoption where we don't already have one. So, a then, couple so the next step is if the, uh, the, the majority of the board are in favor of a particular bill, what is the next step for you as a board to present your approval or opposition to the legislature? Let me just back up a little yeah. bit because we have the set of policies, which I did not put in your packet because we're about to embark on adopting new policies, but we have this set of policies. So this will guide us in the first instance. So for example, um, we had a policy to support allowing the legislative body of a municipality to authorize the governing body to set its own tax rate rather than having to go through the Department of Revenue Administration. So that's a policy that we have. We, I believe on this one, we worked to get somebody to, a legislator to file that policy. We drafted the language of, of the bill. We work with a legislator to get it filed. And then as it works its way through the system, we support that bill. And we go in and we talk with DRA and they say, oh, we don't like this part of it, so we 
change some language and they say okay that's better but what about this and so we make further changes to because when you have everybody sitting together and talking about it you can go through all of the kinks that may be there and work them all out so in the end you get a piece of legislation that is supposed to work so i think i got the process now. so that's that's how it would happen in the normal course of events there was a bill that came in this year um, and it's in one uh, it's in one of these um, bulletins bulletin number nine talks about a zoning notice bill that would impose excessive costs we didn't have any policy about that other than we will always oppose unfunded mandates because that's a violation of the um, strong protection we have in the state under the Constitution that there can be no passing on of unfunded mandates to municipalities so we oppose that bill without a specific policy but because we have a principle that says we will always oppose unfunded mandates and we came to the board with that because there were um, different proposals of variations that the sponsor suggested and we came to the board to say do you think this is okay can can we agree with this you know now it's not noticing the whole zoning district it's only noticing if there's a hundred properties affected do you think that's okay for us to agree with or should we stay the, stay the course and simply oppose it um, so that's the kind of interaction we have with the board um, and I think the other thing too is that it's not just staff people that go up and lobby they want to the, if I don't know how many people here are members of the house or not they don't want to hear from the professional lobbyists all day they want to hear from the people who are actually in the trenches so we try to get the elected officials and appointed officials who are actually going to deal with the bills later to go and testify at the hearings so that's that's another thing that we make sure we try to do as well so it's not just the the hired people that go and speak thank you no problem okay uh, this morning to prepare for the meeting I went on the website good and Google them municipal and I brought up your June bullet and then I read all kinds of things and then I noticed that then I decided to pull up the local government center yeah. okay I Google the search and you popped up you were the first you were the first name that came up yeah. and all the rest of the searches on that list were all about the lawsuit you know what I mean yep. now you're telling us that you're totally separate right yeah okay. yep. while I was on your site I pulled up you've got a long list of resources I thought maybe, maybe it's a clearinghouse you know if somebody wants if a town's looking for a town planner or a town manager they would post it on you know they'd go to your site but apparently all, your site is simply for their advertisers your resources yeah we have we do have uh, one well, ads. I pulled up a couple of categories and then they, they were one or two ads from a company that you know the people that paid on that fee. Well, it's a source of revenue for yeah them. well no we actually have we have advertisements for I know every time we have a vacancy we post on municipal association mm -hmm. um, we actually not only that but the the main municipal association the Massachusetts municipal association and the Vermont municipal association picks up ads there too so other yeah. states can yeah, follow. but say. it's not but we don't charge for local do we charge for not for no. members no um, we don't charge we have a big uh, one of the boxes because mm. I don't know what you were getting for our website but one of the boxes we have is a classified ads box and if you mm. click on that there's all kinds of ads there for positions for RFPs for um, you know a building you know somebody to design a building <coughs> build a building for a town all that kind of stuff we mm -hmm. actually don't have any other paid advertising on our website the other thing I noticed when you had a, a section about sending an email and you can't send an email to you on from that site unless you're town manager or somebody who's approved to, to to send you an email because of well anyway we in order to access legal services you have to be a local official the reason I'm I'm raising it a few years ago I was a library trustee and I had some questions and I spoke to Paul Sanders and I guess he was a local government center at that point yeah but he well was, you were you were tied together back yeah, then yeah, yeah. 
you know, because I notice he's on your list of employees at this yep. point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, maybe it would help because a lot of the confusion about municipal center and local government center is the result of a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For example, as I was going down the searches, I noticed that local government center did a request for right to know law to, uh, to learn the prosecution's case. I thought that was rather strange since it was a judicial proceedings. You know, because uh, uh, as a library trustee, I had a workshop for the right to know law from the attorney general's office as well as the local government center. You know, why don't you explain what the lawsuit was all about and, and what the result of it and because I imagine that's one reason that you split off from the local government centers. Well, first thing I would say is we, we can't change our past. So if you Google the municipal association, there will be a tie to the local government center. We created it. We divorced from it. We're not going to, we can't erase that. No, I understand. Um, the lawsuit, I mean, it, at, the, at the time there was the lawsuit of the, on the question of the combined pooling the, the funding of a creation of a, of a product by using funds from one pool to create it. And that was, that was the ultimate. I'm going to probably go to the director more because she'll have more of the detail. Um, I have to say. We don't have a lot levels, because we weren't involved in that. That's it it wasn't against NHMA. Well, so you broke off when, 2005? No, we, we, com we merged in 2004. We broke off officially last year, 2013. Oh, last year. Okay. However... She always was the employee of the municipal association. Mm. So she wasn't involved in the health trust. That was remember how I said yeah, there was a firewall? So she wouldn't that. she wouldn't be involved in that. Mm. She wasn't she couldn't when there were laws to go forward to change issues for the local government center, for the health side, she was not allowed to testify on those bills because it was not something that the municipalities requested. Wasn't the LGC effectively a subsidiary of NHMA when it was part of the organization? It's actually the other way around. <laughs> LGC was the parent group okay. and NHMA was the subsidiary. Pre-2000. So there was always some degree of Connect. separation. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because of the last year's deliberative session, you know, David Lang spoke up and you know, there's a small group there, and they defunded yep. your dues. I mean, he probably, I, I assume he thought it, it was still part of the, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, Mr. Lang That's why very I'm trying involved. to get some clarification. I, I know, I know Mr. Lang TV, very well. So. Um, you know, he served on one of the, one of the health trusts, I believe, health, health trust board at board one board point. Thing. So he knows the yeah. entities as well. Um, but, no, we've always been a separate advocacy group. That was under the umbrella of the LDC, and, I, and trust me, if I could change Google, so we not, we're not associated, <laughs> I'd do it in a minute. Yeah. But we can't change that, and we can't change our past. So, yeah. and what we're doing is exactly what we're doing today: is coming out to every city town that asks us and try to educate that okay. we're not associated with. Now, them. the local government center just runs health trust. There is no more the, local government center. There's no more government. No. Nope. Who owns the building? There is a group called, there's a real estate, well, actually now it's the health trust that owns the, the building. The health trust owns most of it. Mm. NHMA has a 1.2% interest <laughs> in the building. <laughs> because we, <laughs> because we have put money into it back before um, when the building was first there. So we have a tiny little interest that allows us to be there, um, mm. but we pay rent. Okay, because when I did the Google search in the, on the local government center, it listed them as 134 employees at, in the building. Yeah, but that's no. old. That's, that's old. old. That's not well, the uh, And I can't. And that's the thing. We yeah, can't. No, get I realize. Then you know, yeah. we can't get rid of. That's not. But there I mean, anymore. you know, this is what comes up when you do a Google yeah. search. You and I can right? Google that. Yeah. It's still, you know, no. president. It'll bring, bring something. It brings something up that somebody yeah. did 30 yeah. years ago. You know, because. Yeah. And that's why we're here today, is to explain that we are not that entity any longer. We're separate, as we always were, and that entity is no longer here. And if you have a question about health trust, I'm sure they would send people down. If you have a question of the property liability trust, they'll send somebody down. But that's not our bailiwick any longer. Madam Chairman, if I may, I think we ought to move on from that, because I think it's been pretty well established that the LGC, or the H New Hampshire Municipal Association, has been separated legally for quite some time 
much to this degree enough some of our Mike, members. Well, I agree with you. Um, Murray brings some points, and everybody has had an opportunity to speak. Um, I agree with you, but I think that he brought up some things that some of the answers are very valid and, and points some other things out. Let him do his thing, but keep in mind the LGC doesn't exist. It's not only That's separated, right. they don't it's, exist. Mm. It's okay. all history. We can, yeah. Are but you content you do with find the, that. the questions that you've asked, That's, Sonny? I, I, I'm I, sorry. Are you content with the questions that you've asked now so that we yeah, can move right. on to Jim? Okay. okay. Thank you. They were good questions. No. They, they were good. They were good I questions. Can't Thank you for your presentation, some. Judy and Stephen. Oh. And uh, I think I have the experience of working on the other side as a state rep with the L with the Yeah. always says it happens over. Association. And I always found them, you know, to be educating, number one, but also to tie the different municipalities together so that when we were dealing with the, uh, the pension reform and the spiking in issues which affected us, that they would keep us informed of what Portsmouth was doing and Portsmouth with Hampton. And it, so it would really be a good coordination, and that was really good. I think one of the problems, and I think what Murray was getting, I think that one of the problems is you can educate us. Sunny. 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 I'm sorry, Sunny. you can educate us. You've got to somehow educate the group that's against you because I can remember being in the state house, and no matter what you guys said, it was fought from that other side. Beca and it's it's not it's not that they're wrong. There's a mistrust. There was such a mistrust built up with the LGC that it's really the job to undo that mistrust somehow. And I don't know how it can be done. <laughs> it's going to be tough, uh, you know, because I can't fault those people because they, they, there was a lot of money involved and it was very, very serious. And I, I realized that you separated and some people still think, hmm, are they separated or they're not? So I would just be brief and say, yes, you, you, you do a great job. You do a great job for the town. We have to educate and we have to somehow, ugly divorces have to somehow be settled. <laughs> <laughs> and and we can tell you that's our number one, thing. that's one of our number one things we're trying to do is educate, educate, educate that we're not that entity that was and we're not associated. It, the only thing it's going to do is take time. It took time. Look, I, was, I remember in 2004 when the merger happened, for the first three years it was still called the NHMA. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it switched <laughs> over. Now it's like, okay, the, the yeah. breakup. It's like when you learned, finally learned somebody's married name versus maiden name and they get divorced and you got to go back to learn the other one. Same situation. We're just trying to educate that we're back to where we were for the 60 plus years before 2004 as being an advocacy group for the municipalities. And if I could just add on to that briefly, and I know you've given us lots of time yeah. here, and I'm very appreciative. We actually have been doing really well in the legislature. Um, and I don't know if some of that is because we are fully separate or whatever, but we. Um, we have forged some great partnerships. Last year in 2013, we passed more policy bills than we ever have. I've been there for 22 years. I think we passed 14 policy bills. That is unheard of. We certainly didn't put them all in, but <coughs> they came in from other places. We were crazy trying to advocate for all of them when they came up for hearings and all that, and we were very successful, and we've had a good year this year as well. So I think we are moving that um, that process and getting people to understand who we are and who we're not over there. Right. And to toot their horn, the staff, I heard so many times that yes, there were issues with the LGC side, but they trusted Judy, they trusted Barbara, they trusted Cordell, mm. they trusted Mora. Anybody who would go in there and testify for the municipalities, they trusted on that. And I think that that really says a lot for the staff on that situation, <coughs> that they were very, no matter what was happening on the, the fights with the insurance side, the municipalities' representations were still getting the voice out there, and it's because of the, those individuals who represented us there. It sounds like you've got to go to all of the towns and we're going to whoever the, invites us. Make the selling case. Yeah. You're and we to sell we invite all people to the conference, yeah. too, so we can do it there as well and show you what we are. I do have one question for you, if I may. Uh, where do we stand on this pollution control when they try to say that our uh, the cooling pipes that go across Hampton to the ocean that keep the south the sea, uh, seacoast nuclear power plant running to keep it cool are pollution devices mm -hmm. rather than absolute necessity keep them from melting down? That is a bill we have been fighting for 
um, for a long time, either trying to repeal that or put some time limits on it, and we don't get very far. But I appreciate your efforts on that because one could argue successfully, in my opinion, that without those pipes, it would literally melt right through the ground like it happened, what, at Three Mile Island or one of those, or in Japan recently. Judy, is the problem with that that we have so few communities that are impacted by that? There are all kinds of things, because there's all kinds of things that are out there on um, different types of power plants yeah. and all that that are considered pollution control devices. They are things that are required to be in place in order to meet federal requirements for emissions and all that. It's not like a tax incentive is what makes the company put that in. They have to, to comply with federal law. Um, so we underwrite, as municipalities, we underwrite the company expenses. Um, they have good lobbyists. Well, the thing is, if you have a coal, you know, mm -hmm. producing electricity, a power plant like that, then you want that pollution allowance and credit and give them mm -hmm. all the power they can to help put that in place. I have no argument with that. But when you take a look at Hampton and the Seabrook power plant, without those tubes, it's bye-bye power plant, literally. We get into this debate. And I would say if anybody has, keep it and, and I would note by them running those steam pipes through town, they're, ca they're causing local warming, thermal pollution here in Hampton. But that's not what I wanted to ask about. Uh, <laughs> the uh, use of uh, NHMA lawyers, you brought that up several times, and I wanted to get some clarity on that. You know, recently we when I say we, there were three government entities, uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission, the uh, Hampton Beach Village District, and the town of Hampton collectively uh, cooperated in funding in 91A educational seminar right here in this room. And I notice also that you have a couple, you have at least one webinar coming up in July on 91A, July 23rd. Yep. It's uh, only on non-public sessions. But it's a public session, which yeah. is good. Uh, <laughs> but I was hoping that you know we could do more of that about 91A because there's a lot of stuff in 91A, and uh, I was wondering if, in fact, we had a need to have like a common understanding on a particular law, like nine, just 91 as an example. Is that the kind of thing that we could instead of you know pooling our money because it was a lot of effort to do that? Uh, if we could just call you up and and, and have you send uh, one of your lawyers down and tell us about it. As I said, because of um, the level of your dues, the town is entitled to one um, gratis uh, on-demand training. Lots of times that is on Right to Know. Okay. Um, so we certainly can do that. We also um, are working to do um, four Right to Know sessions around the state every year. Um, and we have <laughs> one in... Londonderry and Madison and Keene, and I think we're looking at something in the Laconia kind of area. I know it's not close, but, um, yeah, but, but this yes. one is a webinar, which is great because I assume you're going to put yeah. on YouTube, so everybody. And that see was it. a specific thing because a, a lot of communities get burned on how they go in and out and on public. So we right. want to have uh, one specific one on non-public sessions. So that's why it's a webinar. Narrow things it. are good yeah. for for mm -hmm. webinars. We also will do right to know training at our conference because we just always do that. Did right. you say there was some yeah. limit on that? Okay. Again, I, I encourage you to video those, you know, and then put them up yeah. later on YouTube. It'd be very, mm -hmm. very helpful. I thank you for the extra time, Madam Chair. Thank you. And is there anyone else that has another question? Just to follow up on it, didn't you say there was a Michael. limit on the people that could sign up? For Mike. That? Mm -mm. No. Okay. No. Not in this meeting. No, across the floor. Okay. Any other questions for Stephen and Judy? Thank you very much. Thank again, you. I want to thank you for joining us this evening. If again. nothing no else, you've given us a lot to think about. Thank you for letting us clarify things. Um, and um, Steve and Judy both have a safe trip back home. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Not too far. <laughs> thank <laughs> you again. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give. 10 minute break and then we will resume. Sorry, I called you the wrong name. Sorry, I called you the wrong name.
Seriously. Oh. By the way, I did correct the... Uh, We're back live. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We are back from break. And we're going to continue on with the agenda. The f next thing on the list is the Selectman's, represent re uh, Selectman's Representative Report. Right. And I, I, nothing, I mean, the default budget, we've done nothing with it. We're assuming that's the budget. Okay. I spoke to the town manager, and I'm just going to piggyback okay. on that. And um, I spoke to him yesterday. He said there, right now there is no intention of doing anything. Right. So for those of us looking for a revised default budget, I said, so no lines are being changed. Everything is remaining as it is as mm -hmm. we looked at it back in. So we can use pretty much our existing budget book as the guide for. For the default. For the default. However, yeah. I would ask um, Jim that if anything does change and anything does Absolutely. get moved, we're not going to meet again until September. But if you could just I would get it to you strike an email out yep. to us or strike it out to Joan and she can yep. circulate we'll it. Do. Thank you. All right. That made that one quick. Mm -hmm. And briefly, while we were on break, I discussed with Jim. It seems that one of the things that we have taken for granted and maybe some of us didn't even know about, it was an enlightenment to me tonight to see the process of the delegation to the conference. And in talking about a rep, quite honestly, um, Jim knows his way around Concord and knows his way around the meetings. He is a selectman. And I would ask that perhaps with discussion with the Board of Selectmen, especially since you overlap on this committee, that it might be prudent to have you be the appointed member for um, the voting delegate to the conference may serve us all. Um, that's just a thought. We have no say in that. It goes to the selectmen. But in no way, shape, or form should we not have someone representing us at that conference mm -hmm. with the vote. I so. agree. We should not have no one representing us. But if we're going to make individual recommendations, I would suggest that Chairman Bean is the one, apparently, that makes the decision. And he might want to consider me for that position. Okay, <laughs> moving on, I'll trust Jim, you'll open the discussion on it. Okay, thank you. That's all I'm asking, you open the discussion. Um, and moving on from that. And I know there's not a meeting next week, because there was a meeting this week, so yep. the next meeting is July 1st. Yes. Could you open the discussion on that July 1st? Yep. Because it probably won't be resolved to just before the conference. All right. Second on the list, um, the Hampton Beach Precinct update. The concert with the high school musicians did occur. It was very successful, and it looks like it's going to be a lock for kind of an annual event, number one. Number two, the vice chair of this committee be appeared before the precinct in his capacity as the representative to the Sea Level Rise Commission created by the governor did a fine job of explaining what's coming. And number three, we're in the process of the Sandcastle competition. See them. If you have no other way to see them immediately, go on the webcam and look at them. They're going to be spectacular. Thank you. How long will they be up? They will be up till July 8th. That's a good long time. That's three weeks. It takes a tremendous amount of volunteers to extend it. Mm. to that date. And when does it officially start? The judging will be this Saturday, and it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they do the actual sculpting. Although the sponsor sculpting is now probably half done. And even at this stage, it's really nice. Mm. And they're still looking for volunteers, <coughs> so please, if you need or want to, I would say want to, Give Kim Barone a call. Her number's on the website. And it's three-hour segments. It's not like volunteering for a whole day. Mm. Okay. This, this is way out of place for our meeting, but I know that we pick the seniors up at Christmas time, and we take them to see the lights. 
That would be nice to pick the seniors up in the summer. It's the same kind of deal we have with the rec department. Like I said, this is way out, but it just brought it to mind that it's going to be out there a little bit longer. I know it's a little late, but just a thought. <coughs> All right, I'll move off. Um, thank you for that, Bob. Uh, the SAU 90 report, Jerry's not with us tonight because there was graduation, I believe. Uh, at Hampton Academy. At, at Hampton right. Academy, which, yeah. As you notice there. The rain. Yep. Um, Big always. Tent. Always. Is it an over by now? Big tent. So <laughs> he's not with us tonight. But we will be getting, after tonight, you're going to be on, you know, your summer hiatus for two months, July and August. But we'll make sure that you get the end of the year wrap up on the financials uh, for the schools. Okay. They'll be coming soon. Um, usually they're out in, by the end of July. Okay. Um, the monthly budget reviews and questions. Have you had any other corrections sent to you? No. no? Okay. Remember, go keep your brains working on that. We're going to finalize that in September. What's that? The, um, the regulation recommendations. You're going to do it in September? We're going to finalize it in September okay, prior you. to budget season, okay? So if you have anything else during this period of time, if you're laying on the beach and, you know, the thought process is going, just send it along to Stephen. That initial document is on HamptonBud.com. Uh -huh. uh, I thought so. I assume that my, my subcommittee chairman would be inclined to keep that up to date as the document evolves from the committee. Absolutely. Okay. So, if, I, so if, I get any, if anybody inputs anything... Send it to me, and I'll add it to this mm -hmm. so that we can all look at it. And we'll do a formal adoption and corrections at our first meeting in September. Okay. Okay. All righty. Moving on to summer schedule. There is no summer schedule. There is no July meeting. There is no August meeting. You will be back here the third week mm -hmm. in September, and that would be um, September 16th. All right, and next, the bud I'm moving right along with this, guys. The budget committee schedule. This is basically our budget year. Yeah. All right, our workshops, our regular meetings. I have also broken down. I listened to all the complaints about long meetings, mm -hmm. and what I did was I broke things down in a way that even as far as department heads were concerned, the department head doesn't have to come in three or four times. They're kind of grouped together. So, no, it won't go with the book. It's not going to go in order of the book. It's going to go in order of the people that represent what's in the book. <coughs> and I will guarantee you that something will change on this somewhere along the line. The December 4th meeting is not on the schedule. So the December 4th meeting and the December 11th meeting have asterisks next to them. And that's just pointing out that I expect it to be finalized exactly the way it is. But if it isn't, then I'll condense something. All right. So this is tentatively 95% complete. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I always find out the thing I missed the day after I hand them out. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, this is the same day that you hand them out. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Go for it. I, I was particularly uh, interested in hearing from the uh, town treasurer uh, we didn't have her here yes uh, last year uh -huh. <coughs> and, uh, I would be very sad to not have her here this year well we can put that on the September 16th September 16th okay she's never part of the workshop process but if you'd like to hear from her we can put that in the well, she does have a budget yeah. she does have a budget um, and, you know, but. she is responsible for all the money in town, basically. So uh, to not have her here is... Uh, I'll put her on on the 16th. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, um, before I get to the approval of the minutes, we have some new business. It's unfortunate business. Um, one of our members has resigned mm. in an open letter. And I'll read it to you. Um, to Chairman Latimer and fellow members of the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee, it is with regret that I must submit my resignation from my seat on the Hampton Budget Committee. Unfortunately, my work schedule has changed 
thus making it impossible for me to attend our meetings. While I have enjoyed my years of service to the town of Hampton, it is clear that circumstances beyond my control mandate that I relinquish my seat. It has been a pleasure knowing all you folks, and I am thankful for the years we were able to work together for the betterment of the Hampton community. Sincerely, Pat Collins. And oh, I know that bad. Pat has missed a couple of meetings because his work schedule changed, and he was hoping that that would yet again change, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, by this it's not. So that being said, um, we accept his resignation. We wish him well, and, and honestly, we thank him. Missed. We thank him for many, many years of mm -hmm. service to this committee. Hopefully, um, that resignation will be short-lived, and perhaps if his schedule changes down the road, we will see him back at some other year. Um, Do we need to make a motion to accept this? No. No. What are you going to do if he doesn't? Oh, I'm just, I'm like, are you going exactly. to? However, what we are going to do is open up the process again to the <coughs> public to replace Pat so that reaching out to the public tonight, anyone interested, I am going <coughs> to leave. We don't have another meeting until September. So I'm going to leave that search open until August 30th, August 31st. Let's close it on the end of the month. August 31st, and um, so that if we have a member of the community that would like to join our group, <coughs> we can get them in place by our first meeting. And that will be to uh, fulfill the rest of the term for Pat, I right, guess. Right. That, mm -hmm. that would be a term that would end uh, yeah. in March. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So his term is, is up in March? No, it doesn't no. matter. When we do an appointment, it lasts for the balance of the year. So in yeah. this case, it would be a five-month appointment. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay, okay. and we'll finish out his term. His term is up anyway. Okay. But it doesn't matter. It's a no. It would be, in this case, a five-month so appointment five, from September right. until five right. months. Close to the next election. Right. Like right. I said, five we, and have, months we have the schedule out there, so hopefully we have a few people out there that would be interested. It would be mm -hmm. the same process. Mm -hmm. It would be an appointment, but it would be an election of this committee mm -hmm. to fulfill the appointment. That sometimes gets confusing. All right, uh, moving on to the minutes of May 20th. Well, we're going to do uh, the... Um, Did I skip something? I thought we were going to do Mike's uh, monthly financial we review. We can do that after the minutes. I'm perfectly pleased to wait. Well, Mike, help. I'm sorry. I went right over that. I That's was okay. I don't mind being missed. So excited. I just missed it. That's now, right. why, don't we, why don't we get you in here before we do the you minutes? You want to do that? Yeah. Well, I sent out an email that was addressed to everybody who does computers, Richard, <coughs> uh, that <laughs> sort of <laughs> it has about uh, five or six bullets, and I'll review those for people who are computer illiterate, uh, just for your benefit. By choice. <laughs> I believe his I choice like, was I like picking on you on that point. <laughs> but no, generally, generally speaking, there's only about a half a dozen things that sort of reach out and grab your attention in relation to a year ago. Okay, I'm putting it really briefly, and I'll make it quick. Revenues, okay, on page three of this document, which I may should have picked up at the town office, has nothing to do with computers again. Anyway, page three, you'll notice that the revenues are up about 1.5% over 13, which one could say is a good thing. Okay? If you, and if you scoot along, you look at item two in my notes out to the rest of the committee, there's $300 in the budget committee training account. So that means at $75 per each, that's four people. So moving on to item number three. In Mike, my I'm going to stop you right there, yeah. especially since I made the budget. It's three people to conference, not four people to conference, because there are other things that are offered by municipal that could benefit in the form of, um, I'm losing a word here. A lot of their printed material come out in booklets like this and come out on disk now on municipal laws and mm -hmm. things that may be beneficial. Mm -hmm. And there is a charge for that. That's also true, but you also have a 
significant account for supplies, and that would fall into that category, Madam Chairman. And if Excuse we're going to say, me, Michael? wait a minute, just a minute, Madam Chairman. No. If we're going to, if people on this budget committee want to go to be tra to trained, I have no problem spending 15 <coughs> for 15 people to go that learning session. Now, if that overspends the budget, that's too bad. That's the way I feel about it. Now, if you want to argue about it, fine. <coughs> Write it down on a piece of paper, and I'll file it appropriately. Excuse me, Mr. Okay, Pierce. Okay, now, I'm going to finish You're my report. You're being very report. disrespectful at this point? Yes. I'm not being and I'm, disrespectful. And I find I'm just you telling need, you the facts. You know, I find a need to correct this right here. Yes? The budget for supplies Yes. is supplies only. And I'll remind everybody here that our budget is more than bare bones or less than bare bones and the supplies are fine-tuned most of the time as has been the case I've supplemented out of my pocket for supplies the money in education was put there for three people as it was last year with a little bit left for the idea that we have publications and we have things available on CD to us, but they are not free. And they are not supplies, they're education materials. So they have been appropriately thought through in the right categories. I don't think it's for you to change. I didn't say it was not for me to change, Madam Chairman. However, we'll move on now. I was on to the Budget Committee. I've been on the Budget Committee for about and 10 years plus, excuse me. And we have never spent hardly any money whatsoever out of the supplies line in the budget. Only since you've been the chairman, we've managed to spend a significant amount of money out of that, out of that account. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? That means we have free printing at the town. Everything we no, need. No, you to, don't. Oh, yes, we do at the no, town office. Yes, we do. If you want to argue about that, we can prove that later. You do not have free printing. Yes, at we the do town. at the town. We've been down that road many times before. Michael, what is the topic we're discussing? Exactly. We're discussing yeah. about getting people to get training if they want it. You're talking about the uh, budget workshop? No. Yeah. Uh, yes, if they want okay. it, they we, should we, be able we to go. We three people. And I'm not going to debate it. If you want to, if five oh, people want to go, I thought we're talking about financials. Well, he's we talking are. about right. it relative to a budget, I think. We are. You know That's what? a line item in the budget, Steve. And I'm Can pointing out. Can we address out, this as a separate item later after he gets done with his financial report? Let him do his you financial know, report. He's on a course this. of things here, and it stands. I know. I just want to get it back on no, top. You might want to get back on top, but I want to discuss it. All right. Let's discuss it. All right. First of all, we don't get free copies. As a matter of fact, last year when I needed copies from the planning board, it was a major, it was a major, major problem with that. Every department has their expenses for supplies. And you know this as a selectman. And when we go to another department and ask them to copy something for us, it's coming out of their department, whoever and wherever it is. It created a problem that got solved by building our own small amount into our budget for supplies. Much like we defined taking the legal expense out, the $1,000 for legal, because we could be covered and we found ways to cover it. That money is in the budget because for years, I've been printing it out at my expense. And as we're getting ready to pass this to other people, it's something that should be covered by a minute budget in our own in our own budget to begin with and that's why it's there and the education is there not only it's education period it's not education to use it all up to send as many people as we possibly can out of that budget but for education entirely and there are other materials more than the conference and we agreed for three people. No, we didn't agree. I don't think we agreed on three, uh, uh, Madam Chairman. And second of all, if we want five or six or eight people or this whole committee to go to an education committee That won't meeting, happen. Uh, wait, you, we don't have the money. Excuse me, I've got you the floor. You know what, Michael? Excuse we me, don't have, have the, the money for I, it. I don't care if you have the money or not, Madam Chairman. Well, Let me I finish. Do. I've got the floor. When we want to send people to this, to get educated on the budget committee, 
that is perfectly fine with the taxpayers in the t town of Hampton. And if you overdraw your budget, that's fine with me too, because I've been there and done that, and you have not been keeping track of the supplies for a long period of time like you say you have, because you've only been the chairman for a short period of time. So that account has been drawn upon only since you've been a chairman, which is 160 some dollars if I'm not mistaken, and nobody has ever done that before. So you need to explain that to this committee why you're spending that kind of money on what appears to be almost nothing, okay? Because we can do it for free. So if you want to get into that battle, welcome to the fight. Mike, I got a question. Yes. <laughs> Under training, you yes. know, you've got situations where Town employees have gone to law school under the training budget, come back and get another job in the town. You know, the training should be for, if you're on the budget committee, you go to a little workshop. If you work for the DPW and you want, need some additional training to do your job, it's fine. But I mean, to, for a town employee to use the, the training funds to go to law school, but uh, that I'm, seems a bit excessive out, to me. If I may, that this? has <laughs> nothing to do with this. I'm we're, sorry, you understand. I think he was speaking about the value of education generally. Oh, generally. yes. Yes, with and I agree With any kind of responsibility that. to this committee, where are we going with this that the budget committee would say, if it costs more than we have in the budget, mm -hmm. then so be it? That's correct. Well, Michael, I don't agree with you. Well, that's okay. your choice. We have a budget, we and we will stick to it. However, however, you probably noticed that not only this committee, but the Selectman's Committee and the other committees in this town have overspent their training budgets almost every year. If you look back through the last few years, and I can speak as a Selectman, the Selectman overspent it because I helped overspend it. Well, I've been there. I've done that. And that is good for the Selectman to be learning about. But that's the bottom line budget. Yeah. We don't have a bottom line budget yes, that we, we can overspend. No, you don't. We have a bottom no, line you budget. Don't. Yeah. No, you don't. We can't overexpend our no, money. You divide don't. it into supplies yeah. and education. It's the bottom it's line. A, right. No, and the same with them. If you overspend, they have a <laughs> if you overspend it, it is not this committee's issue. It is the board of, of selectmen and the town manager issue. that may stay within the bottom line. Of course uh, yeah, it's this no. committee's no, issue. You're, you're confused about how the budget works. No, I'm not yes. well, no, we're not confused. Wait a minute. Confused. I, think we have, I went we, to the class. We have, we have a, uh, you know, a situation here where we're talking all, to, all kinds of different Apples and oranges and all kinds of bananas and No, you know here. what? We've got a lot of that. stay on one topic here. Yeah. What's one that? What we, is the topic? <laughs> that you excuse me. Raised? That's the question. Gentlemen, both of you. No, there's been a lot of accusations, and it's not just loose talk as usual. Mm -hmm. All right? There's been a lot of accusations. Be clear. The budget was made. We will abide by the budget, and we will not go over the budget. That's your choice. I support that. Moving I don't on. Think we should go mm -hmm. over the, well, the budget committee. We should how, not. However, <laughs> moving on. on. It's, it's up to the budget you have committee another collectively. Issue? It's not up to the chairman. It's up to the collective. Michael. Feeling of, excuse me, Madam Chairman. No, I think the, I think the discussion is <laughs> It's up is to the collective feeling of the budget committee, not the chairman. She does not do anything without this committee's permission. You know, Period. I, 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 it's accusatory. I, I agree with that statement, Michael. I don't agree with the statement that we can go over the bottom line of the Budget Committee's budget. That would right. be absurd. All right, just absurd. We're a Budget Committee. We should adhere to our budget. Okay? We have a bottom line budget as a Budget <coughs> Committee. We should not exceed that. Period. How we manage that bottom line budget, all right, you're right. It is essentially the Committee's decision. I agree with That's that correct. portion of it. But your statement about going over the bottom line budget of the budget committee, I think, is just way over the top. I'm just using as an example, Tim. What I'm trying to say is there's $300 in that committee for training, in that line item for training. That's $75. That's times four. That means four people can get trained rather than the chairman's advocate advocating only three can go because that's not a correct well, statement based on I the money. I personally, I think there's, a, there's more ways to slice that pie than mm -hmm. buy $70, $75 slices. Mm -hmm. right? And I don't agree that we made an agreement of three, what three people were going to go. That's certainly not true. That's correct. Okay? <laughs> and I think we really need to address that, Gentlemen, uh, we're on that a default issue budget. as a committee. Who, what part? Who, wait a minute. And I think we ought to best do that by first saying, who wants to go? Exactly. And then we total up the number of people that want to go, and then we figure out how we can make an accommodation Tim? for that. That's correct. Right. Statement, free country, everybody has a voice in this. Okay. 
Gentlemen, we're on a default budget. That has nothing to do with anything. It has right. everything to do with in it. The opinion. funding that is in the budget goes back to a prior year when you weren't even here. And at that point, we determined that three people would go every year. When did we decide that? We yes, didn't decide that. Last meeting. It's, it's in the minutes. It's, it's in, in the, the minutes, minutes, but it's oh, not on the video. It was never decided. Oh, by it. It. There, there was it. no motion at all. Oh, it's the off until September. I'm, I'm so cool. don't don't use that on me. That does not work. Michael, that's Period. what happened. You Period. don't have to like it. No, you, you cut it right. off till September that you agree on the policy. We have no policy at this point. No motion. There's no motion. There's no motion. There was no motion. It was back. Not even in the minutes. I know. Vote, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Do you have another topic? Do you want to finish this or not? Now. Let's stop this. Please. Yeah. Oh, Excuse move me, on. Steve. You're not the chairman. Excuse me. I know. But I, 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 let's try to be civil here. I am trying to be civil. I'm just addressing the facts as they present themselves. There's $300 in that line item. That's what Are you I said on, on item two. Item three, you want to continue this or you want to keep interrupting? Which are you moving it? on? I am, but are you going to keep on. interrupting? If you stop interrupting, I'll continue. Otherwise, I'm going to stop. Okay, that's okay with me. Well, that's fine, I do. Okay, I'll stop. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Minutes. Can we move on? To yes, the, we can, to the approval of the minutes. Excuse me, we didn't finish with the whole business yet. I don't understand this line item you have here, duties, regulations, review, update, and recommendations. I don't know what that means. That was what Stevens putting together? Okay. Well, the and so, we already went over that? I have some old business I would like to discuss. It's not on the agenda. So, <laughs> old business doesn't have to be on the agenda, Madam Chairman. You're violating your own rules. <laughs> Let's approve the minutes. How's that sound? I'm moving on to the minutes. I want an Thank opportunity, you. and I you request take that it the, at the board afford me an opportunity to discuss an, an old business item under the old business before we leave old business. Everybody take, a, everybody take mm -hmm. a deep breath, okay? Mm -hmm. And just relax for a minute. Thank you, Steve. I suggest at least two times so we take a deep breath. Okay, it's more zen-like. <laughs> May I, Madam Chair? What is it? It's not on the agenda. Well, it's old business, and you know there ought to be old business in case someone has to bring up what something is it? from the old business. Go ahead, Tim. And you know the the issue that was uh, about you know the previous meeting there having been decided who's going to the budget workshop is simply not true. There was no motion made. I'm not. There was no video on it. So therefore, I make a motion that we poll the current members huh? and determine how many wish to go to the budget workshop. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Now, I think that, you know, it, it, there's no way I'm ever going to support exceeding the budget committee's bottom line budget. But I think we, we need to decide, first of all, who wants to go to the budget workshop and then at least make a selection from there. All right, this is now open for discussion, so I'm going to discuss that point. The decision of three people was based on new people coming into the committee. So therefore, to leave it open for whoever wants to go will grow our budget, meaning that if for any given year, if all 15 people decide that they want to go, we will have to fund all 15 people. That doesn't mean that. I don't agree. You don't have to agree. To have a right. fairness in the to have a fairness in what you're proposing in saying, let's find out who wants to go. I think that's a good idea. Let's it find out confined. who wants to go, Madam Chairman, it was all this babble. Has it already been set on who's going this year? Yes. It's, it's already been open for... No, no. Yeah, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't decided. There was I no motion. I understand the dollar value is there. I'm, I'm, my question is what three members are going this year is, is my question. Has okay. been, and who's been And decided? we had discussed it. But there was no decision made. It's on the video. There was no decision made, and certainly there was no motion. Even the minutes reflect there was no motion. Right. Yeah, we did. We discussed it at the last meeting. Mr. Wood, Mr. Laughlin, or Laughlin and Mr. Mr. LeBranch. LeBranch will attend. That's but there it. was no motion to make that a fact. All right? And if you watch the video, you'll see that there was no decision even pronounced. All right. So I'm trying to get this resolved now. Who wants to go? That's a simple motion that I have on the table if we can simply agree no, to poll that, the members that are here tonight. All right, who wants to go? And then we'll know, what, then we'll know whether we have... 
and then we'll know whether we have a problem. Then only when we know how many people actually want to go will we know the extent uh, of the problem we have to solve. Yes. Right. I'll find out who wants to go. Right. That's Simple. Right, right All right. Way you know what? This meeting's out of order. Madam Chairman, this I think meeting if is the, out of order. If the committee right? wants to go to the training, they discussed. should be able to decide for themselves. Legally, if you want to this leave, meeting that's is your out choice. Of order, Mr. Have, a, have, a, have a nice okay. day. If you want to leave, go ahead. Your choice. Well, the chairman, vice chairman, take over. I make a have motion a good night. to adjourn the meeting. No, no, there's no way. We have we have opening business here. How can you adjourn a meeting when because there's a, a motion on the, the meeting table? Is out of right, you can. Easy. Motion to adjourn is not debatable. That's right. Okay. Mm. So How can you adjourn a meeting when there's a motion on the table? Because you cannot, meeting is out of you cannot have another motion yes. when there's a motion on the table. Yes, that supersedes. Jim, the Mr. chair can Jim, table the motion. And second I seconded it. Stephen seconded it. Okay. All those in favor adjournment. of adjournment. See you in September. <laughs> All those opposed? Thank you, Chairman.